Hello everyone, this video is going to go over uh, an overview of a MATLAB script to calculate the heat flux uh, from temperature data recorded using a thin skin calorimeter. So we're going to take, we're going to use calibration data, we're going to calibrate our thin skin calorimeters and some known uh, incident heat flux scenarios, and then we're going to take the temperature profile that we collect and calculate the incident heat flux. So we know that uh, in this scenario we're going to use a contact resistance to uh, as our calibration factor so we're going to solve this equation we talked about this equation in, in a previous video as a general overview of thin skin calorimeters but just for a reminder this is the equation that we're going to be solving so if we look at our script we have start with our standard clear all close all uh, CLC and then we define our all of our known quantities um, all of the uh, the density of the material, the specific heats, the thicknesses, uh, ambient temperatures, heat, convective heat transfer coefficient, our emissivity, and Stephen Boltzmann's constant. Stephen Boltzmann's constant, obviously. So then, uh, we want to collect our data. <coughs> so in our, we calibrated the the thin skin calorimeters. I used using a cone calorimeter. And the data that comes out of the cone is in an Excel file. So we have uh, data is equal to XLS read and then the file location on the hard drive. And then we're going to take the columns in, in that data and we're going to, uh, well, from that file and we're going to define our variables. So we say, okay, so data is everything that came in from the Excel file. And then we have a timestamp because data first column the thermal couple or thin skin calorimeter uh, temperature is the second column and we're going to make it an absolute temperature we're going to change it to a Kelvin scale and then this temp is our uh, substrate temperature they should probably be labeled a little bit better but uh, that's alright and then we have some some let's call them Time stamps. This this will need to be adjusted slightly for however your data acquisition system is set up. But these are time stamps for uh, when the data was collected in the in the cone. So you let the cone run for a certain amount of time to get uh, clean air, and then you run your test, and then uh, you stop the test later uh, to, after it collects more clean air, so you know your instruments didn't drift and blah blah blah. So uh, and then we have our we define our time test as the time stop minus the time start plus one. All right. So what we're going to do is calculate our. Uh, we're going to use this for loop to generate the data that we're going to that we're going to use in the calculation. So we're going to say. We're going to go for the count is just a counter one colon length of time start. We're going to say time so this is all just shifting code. Sorry, it takes me a second. I haven't looked at this code in a little while, but all we're doing is taking our data from here. And getting the section, uh, the section of data that is relevant. So we're getting rid of the clean air, clean air bits. So all we're going to do is get our the a time stamp, the thin skin calorimeter temperature, and insulation temperature, or the insulated temperature at the uh, at the times that we want. So we're going to define those. Okay. Then we're going to calculate. We're going to define a DT. So we know we're, we're sampling at one hertz. And we're going to calculate our change in time, our change in temperature as our, our change in temperature over change in time. So our dt over dt. And so that's just uh, all we're going to do is take our change in temperature uh, at each at each uh, at each point in the array, and then divide it by dt, which is one. So it doesn't matter, but maybe you didn't sample it one hertz, so I put it in there. Uh, then we're gonna we 
we're de going to define our surface temperature, which is this TSC temp that we defined up here. We're going to define our insulated temperature, which is just this temp that we defined up here. And then we're going to start calculating our heat flux terms. So we have our, we know Q net is uh, rho Cp del delta dt over dt, the convective term, radiative, radiative losses. Then we're going to define, uh, well, I define these constants. They probably should have been defined above, but I have them down here. Our, uh, the thickness of the thermal conductivity, the thickness of the substrate, and uh, some type of <coughs> excuse me, some type of contact resistance, um, and then we can calculate our conductive losses here using the equation we we showed in the in the PowerPoint presentation, and then we calculate our incident heat flux combining all three of the heat trend or all four of the heat transfer terms that we calculated above. So all we're going to do is we take the equation we got we defined here and we're just going to solve it in our MATLAB code. So that equation is finally solved for here. And then we're going to smooth it. So this is a an averaging um, We're just going to average eight points in a row. I defined this averaging term up here. Number point average is eight. So it's just going to smooth the curve a bit so you don't get so much bouncing around of the heat flux as it goes along. And then we're going to calculate the averages here. And then we're going to plot. So we're going to plot uh, the surface temperature and the substrate temperature and then the incident heat flux uh, for all three all three calibration terms and we just have our legend actually this is from an old plot and don't need that so the main thing is is setting up getting your data from how, wherever it came from in your calibration uh, data acquisition setup and then determining which data in that data set you want to use because there'll probably be some uh, some extra data in there so that's what we do here is select the proper amount of, 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 uh, of, of let's say, the proper amount of the array to use. So if you don't want to do this, this whole section here, if you don't want to have to deal with that, you can cut your data manually so if you instead of importing an entire Excel file uh, if you manually go in and say okay the only data I have is the data that I want then you don't have to worry about uh, selecting the appropriate amount of data in your MATLAB code and then you can just start here calculating your change in temperature over change in time which is just your surface temperature at 2 colon end in all, all columns minus uh, the surface temperature at 1 colon end minus 1 because uh, you can't subtract. You want to make sure we went from 2 to end and now we're going from 1 to end minus 1 so they need to be the same length um, in all the columns even though I think there's only one column for this particular case. And then these these calculations are pretty straightforward and and this is quite straightforward. So there's not a whole lot of, of loops and other fanciness in this particular code. So that's pretty much it. Uh, the output looks like this. You can see the temperature profiles. Uh, the two of them, you, <coughs> excuse me, you have a surface temperature come up and reach steady state and the substrate temperature is approaching the surface temperature but doesn't quite get there. For the three cases in the timeline, or in the time that we uh, that we let the calculation run for, but the surface temperature does reach a steady state, and then uh, the heat flux looks like this, where we we calculate the heat flux at 25, 75, and 
25, 50, and 75 kilowatts, which I need to put the correct uh, legend numbers here, but it's uh, 25, 50, and 75, and you can see that 25 were a little high, 50 were pretty much pretty much there, and 75 were a little low. Uh, so the calibration got pretty close, pretty close. Not exactly where we wanted it, but uh, not too bad either. So I hope you found this useful, and you have a good day.